course, what he's seeing here is the rapture. <coughs> Those taken from earth in clouds, transported to that reality. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And it was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Turn to Revelation, the fifth chapter. This is what Daniel sees. That was the fifth chapter, verses 6 to 7. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven heads and seven eyes, seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So, Daniel sees the vision. He sees different aspects of what John is revealing in the book of Revelation. And he is able to convey what he sees because he doesn't understand it but it's the same reality that the father established it is the same reality that we are heading toward hoping to become one of the finished products in that reality principle. Scripture teaches the Dawn Star leaders designated mighty ones operate in this reality. To an Exodus, the sixth chapter, the verse three. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by God Almighty, El Shaddai. But by my name, Jehovah was not known to them. <coughs> El Shaddai means mighty God. The word mighty pertains to these beings. Elohim is what they are, translated God. But they are called by what they are, and their name designates the title the level of authority that they can administer now turn back to Revelation the 10th chapter verse 1 And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, his face as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. This designation of the dawn star hierarchy, they are all called mighty. In the Hebrew would be Shaddai. Revelation 18, verse 21. <clears throat> and a mighty angel 
took up a stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more. So we find there's at least three. John says in Revelation 10, I saw another mighty angel. This one says a mighty angel. Revelation 5, verse 2. And I saw, and I saw a strong angel. It's the same word, skoros, mighty. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, "Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof?" So the the dawn star hierarchy operate in this reality. All the designated movers and shakers. Um, the seraphim, four living creatures, operate in this reality. It's the highest state of existence up until the bride, because they all operate outside of the rainbow, which shadows the throne. Those that operate within it are basically going to be those that are incorporated into the Godhead. Scripture teaches this reality is the culmination of the completed state of the whole. What we're looking at is the revelation of the finished condition of all the groups <coughs> that come into the presence of the Father directly. We're given the state of the groups and the reasoning of how they got to be in the state that they're in. Those that were completed, those that weren't. Uh, case in point, turn to Revelation, back to Revelation, the fifth chapter, verse 9 and 10. And they sung a new song. It's their testimony, saying, Thou what were thee to take the book, to open the seals thereof, <coughs> Thou hast slain, and has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So what they're talking about is they made the rapture. The word redemption is referring to the adoption. <clears throat> Look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. They are redeemed, adopted out of the human race every kindred, tongue, nation, people on the face of the earth as a representative that's redeemed out of, completed, out adopted, as a fully adopted as a son that stands before or stands around or sits around the throne. Verse 10, And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. They become kings and priests at the time that they are redeemed instantaneously. The crowns, the uh, glory, everything manifests instantaneously. Complete product. Revelation 7, verse 13. One of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And he said, I said unto them, Sir, thou knowest. So this represents the completed, finished work. And also we have him referring to work that was not completed. Those that did not allow themselves to be 
totally finished in that respect. Revelation 7, verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So they're all they're all manifesting in the same reality. That is the Father's reality. But the finished product, they are now, that's it. They are what they're going to be. Now, the elder understands everything about the great multitude. Explains it to John. How they got there. Well, they got there by washing their robes and making them white in the blood of the Lamb. In other words, they qualified by laying their life down. So, what this is saying is that we're getting a picture of all the groups, what they will arrive at, the state that they're going to arrive at, and why it was that they arrived at that particular state. In Revelation, the sixth chapter, verse nine. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. We have a description of them, the souls of them. That's all they are, is souls. No robes, no glory, just souls. Who are they, how they come to be in that position? In essence, from a spiritual perspective, they come up naked. They have no covering. The altar covers them. We know that they come up because they've laid their lives down as martyrs. They the supreme sacrifice. That's the only way that they made the qualification. We know that they became martyrs at the rapture. Unlike the tribulation saints who missed the rapture but endured for a period of years before their martyrdom came, this group gets martyred at the time of the rapture by the Luciferian kings. Now, what situation is attributed to them? Turn to Revelation, the third chapter. Revelation, the third chapter. Verses 14 to 18. Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now, where we are now is outside of the Father's reality. We're in the future. And in the future, the state of the church is the condition of the churches is being declared. Verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Indifferent. Care less. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and know it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. So what's being said here is that they are living, thriving in the physical at the expense of the spiritual. They have literally destroyed their covering by the way that they live. And what the Lord says is as far as he is concerned they are uh, uh, totally without any covering at all. Notice what he goes in the same verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Thou mayest be rich and white raiment. In other words, cover yourself. That thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Anoint thine eyes with eyes shaft that thou mayest see. So talking about white raiment. <coughs> they have no covering. Those that are under the altar have no covering. They're given white robes. 
<coughs> so what we find is this is indicative of people who live in the physical satisfying and gratifying this is Christian satisfying and gratifying the senses and what the Lord is instructing them to do while there's still time <coughs> is to have those experiences <coughs> that will bring the spirit back to life and enable them to gain rewards in heaven counsel of the buy of me gold tried in the fire <clears throat> only the rich experiences that we have as the result of experiencing the sufferings of Christ will <clears throat> enable us to function as movers and shakers in eternity without that won't make it so what we find here in Revelation the 6th chapter verse 9 are the Laodiceans who when the rapture took place fell as victims of the persec persecuting powers by offering themselves up as sacrifices martyrdom and that enabled them to <coughs> qualify for the entrance into the all underneath the altar now evidently there's multitudes thousands of tens of thousands of them that are there but <coughs> since they didn't have any experiences they can come out and they can dwell in the presence of the father but they're going to be on the lowest rung of the heavens in that respect Turn to Luke, 21st chapter, verse 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life so that day come upon you unwares <clears throat> that's exactly what caught them up cares of this life gluttony satisfying gratifying the desires of the flesh and not being aware not being in a position to gauge what was happening because they were totally out of tune with the spirit and as a result they paid the price so what we find here is a vignette picture of the finished product in the presence of the Father. All the groups that are going to make it. And we notice that there's no group there that was there in the beginning. The first group that comes are the elders who make the rapture and everybody else follows them so what we're finding here is the father is giving us a picture of what he sees first from eternity the picture he sees from eternity is that his desire was for everybody to be gathered around the throne the finished product that we see is the different groups one around the throne the rest before the throne the picture that the father is giving us is that this reality is progressive it accommodates the changes that those who are called initiate into it and the finished product is of course that everybody will not be around the throne that you're going to have a wide range that will be there but on different levels of descendancy 